today uh, we're going to be going over uh, many different type of end games. So basically, we're going to be focusing on lots of different end game positions. And uh, the first position I have is the following end game: is white to play, and the goal in this position is to win a pawn. To win this d5 pawn, okay? That's what you're trying to do. So the goal will be to find a way to win this d5 pawn here. So let's think about it for a minute or two and calculate some possibilities here that you can try to do here. First of all, when a pawn is by itself in the middle of the board, what do we call this pawn? Isolated, isolated pawn. So remember, the pawn by itself, it's an isolated pawn. Now. What can we do in this end game as white? In order to win the pawn, you have to first attack it. So that's the first idea, right? So, but the problem is, you know, there is a danger of him advancing this pawn and exchanging it simply. So that's why you have to make sure you play the right move here. Raise your hand if you have any idea here as what can you do to win this pawn in the middle of the board. Yes? Just attack on the knight, knight to e3. Very good idea. You go knight e3 and now you want to win the pawn. See, you have two pieces attacking. But looks like it's a problem. He just pushes it. And he's going to simply try to exchange this weak pawn. If you have a weak pawn in the middle of the board, you always want to exchange that pawn. Push up. Well, we could play this move, but I don't know if it's really going to do that much for us. We could do that. We could. We go back. We, we laid him push, and now we go back, we attack again. Now we have three pieces attacking on it. Looks like no choice. He has to push it again. Don't rush here. Think. Don't rush. Remember, if you see a good move, look for a better one. 91 is very natural, but maybe you have something even better. <laughs> knight, knight, knight to d4. That's the very nice idea that I wanted to, you to see. Knight goes on d4, blocking the rook. Looks like he can just take it, right? So he doesn't take it, we just simply take the pawn. We're going to win this game. So he takes it. What do you do? Capture the bishop? No, no the pawn. And now we have him pinned. See, by a neat maneuver with a knight, you're going to be able to win this pawn. And here you can slowly convert into a win with the extra pawn. If you had a king on g1, could you do the same thing? No. Why? Exactly. If the king was on g1, he would have gone bishop f2, discover the check, and then he will pick up your rook. So it's very important to see what is the position of the king. Okay. So let's go back and see again how this happened. Weak pawn, you attack it. He pushes the pawn, you come back. Remember, in the end game, if opponent is pushing the pawns, every time you push a pawn in the end game, that means you create a weakness. Okay? So that's why. So we attack, we go back now. He comes forward, and now we block. He takes, we take the pawn, and good position. Okay, good job. Now let's move forward to the next example here. So let's take a look at this position and 
evaluate it first. First I want you to evaluate. Look at the position and just tell me who you think is better and how much. Slightly better, big advantage, perhaps winning. So white to play and you need to convert this end game. Okay? Convert into a win. Let's try to see what are the pluses, what are the minuses in this position for both sides. Well, that's, th that could change, because if you move your king, that could change. Something else. Look at, some, look at something else. There is something else in this position that immediately, if you look, what do we see here? Immediately, when we look at the pawns, what do we see? Uh, black's pawns are double. Aha. Uh -huh. Double pawns. Double pawns is one thing. But there is something else that I would like you to mention here. That black has that white doesn't have. Double pawns, but what else? Yes, yes, uh, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a plus for black actually. Because the bishop is stronger when there are pawns on both sides of the board. Very important detail. Bishop is usually stronger than the knight when there are pawns on both sides of the board. But there is something else here. It's nothing to do with the pieces here, it's just a, some, another detail that if you look, besides the weak pawns, what else black, black has here? He has less mobility. But still, I'm still looking for uh, that one more detail here. In the end game, you always count this, yeah? Oh, okay. Black uh, doesn't really have any moves. Many moves? Is that true? He doesn't have so many moves, but for us, what about the pawn islands? Do you count the islands when you're playing? When you reach an end game, do you count how many islands opponent has and how many you have? This is very important. How many pawn islands black has here? Three. Three. Pawn island, if you're not familiar with it, it's the pawn that is by itself. So that pawn is one. This two is another island. Another island. Not only he has many pawn islands, he also has double pawns. So basically this is a very, very bad pawn structure. But it doesn't mean that you're just going to win because he has a bad pawn structure. You still have to play precisely, because he has a bishop. And we know that bishop is stronger when there are pawns on both sides of the board. So what would be the right plan? So by the way, who can tell me the proper evaluation here? What it would be? Slightly better for white. We know that white is better. Is it slightly better? Is it a big advantage? Or it's winning position? When we evaluate the position, there are three things we can say. Slightly better, big advantage winning position or sometimes also equal position but I think it's pretty clear that this is this cannot be an equal position because black has too many weaknesses so how much you think white is better here big advantage second round. after that I second his motion. uh huh Big advantage. Okay, big advantage is good. <laughs> what else? Anybody thinks white is winning? Yeah, I think white's winning. I think uh -huh. White is winning. Technically, white is winning here. Okay? But probably it's right now, if we evaluate, it's a big advantage. We can't just say white is winning yet. We have to still prove that. So you would need to prove that. Okay? And now let's see how we can prove that White is going to win this game. So what would be the first move? You get one point for finding the right move here. King 
king e4. But if you put the king here, well, where are you planning to enter? So can you enter here? No. Here? No. Here? No. See? You don't really have entry points. Can't you then check him on c4 and then force it to back on? Uh, okay, for well let me let me go here. You check, I go here. See, I control that. E5 square. So Somebody also mentioned knight c4 move. You could do that, but knight is actually well placed here. If you check, you're just gonna, I don't know, come up. So we're not making much progress here. Knight to c4, I mean, no, no, king to c4. King to c4, correct move, one point for that. Activating the king. You always wanna activate your piece to the maximum. Now you activate the king, and he's really you now stuck with the c5 weakness. He can't just move the king away, you just take the pawn. If he takes your knight, king and pawn endgame, when there are no pieces left, only kings, we call that a king and pawn endgame, because only kings and pawn left. So that's king and pawn endgame, it's gonna be basically lost, because now he's gonna run out of moves, he comes up, push. And what do we call this position? Suksavang. Okay? He has to go back, we take one. What do we call again? Suksavang, right? <laughs> and we take another one. So this is just winning. <laughs> so, he cannot take the knight, so he will play bishop here. Okay, we activated a king, but how do we win this position? Very important idea you have to find. Very precise. Play needed here. Yes? Uh, play uh, b4 with the attempt of knight a4 to capture the c5. Good idea, but do we want to undouble the double pawns? Well, with the, you end up protecting the a pawn with the. With the okay, you're saying this move, correct? I take yeah. you. Okay, I go here. Yeah, now that'll cross my Because you go here, now I can put the bishop here. Okay, so let's go back. So we don't want to play that yet. Okay? Knight A4. That. So what do you do next here? Knight A4, correct. Attacking the weak pawn. You give your pawn, it's okay. But when he takes it, takes not only you take this pawn, now next move you're also gonna take this and he cannot do anything. So he's gonna lose two pawns. But still you have to convert this advantage. So let's take a look how white converts this advantage. You're up a pawn, but still. Well, this might be an inaccuracy because now suddenly his king, king is gonna get active. You don't want to do that. So this could be a problem. So we don't want to do that. So take bishop e6, we take this pawn. Now knight a6, it goes bishop e3. Knight goes back to b4. Bishop f4, knight c2. Anyway, so knight comes back to d4. If we can somehow force this pawn to move, it would be good because we can check now. It will weaken his light squares. So now we just next move is push. Now knight comes back to f3, controlling the e5 square so king cannot enter suddenly. And he also putting pressure here. Bishop f6 and now simply go back. Now he wants to start pushing the c pawn. He played c3. King b5, king d5, c4 check, king e4, king d6. Now, it's a very nice position, we are up a pawn, but still, it's, you don't really have a clear cut win here. It's not like he's gonna resign, you still have to find that final touch here. 
So what do you do here? We know it's a winning position, but you still have to win the winning position. That final touch now needed. Yeah, that's very nice, but when your knight reaches d5, maybe he just goes bishop d8. Yep, yeah, this takes time. This takes time. He finished this game in just three moves here. <laughs> very effective finish now. Yes. You want to go this way? King d3, you could, but he will probably put his king back to b6. So block it. See, the king is active. A knight is also well placed, but where is our advantage in this position? Uh huh. Uh huh. Pass pawn, right? Pass pawns, they're meant to be pushed. So here, you push the pawn. Because we need to deflect this king. Because if we can deflect him and penetrate with the king, we will simply collect all the weak pawns. Imagine your king reaches f7, simply collect everything, and then you just push the pawns. g5, h4, easy. So he has to, now he has no moves. He has to go here. And now, knight e5, check. Activating the knight. Can he take the pawn? Can he take this pawn? Yeah? Check. Fork. Winning the bishop. Not a good idea. And if he takes, and let's look at the king and pawn endgame. What's the best move here? What's the best move? King d5 or d6? You want to win this pawn. That's the priority. Win this pawn first. And now we go here. And we can simply now give him the c pawn. If he keeps our position, what do we do? Push. If he goes away, we push the c pawn again. So he has to go here. And push the pawn all the way. OK? So this is how you win an endgame like this, where you have, uh, you know, you have a nice advantage, but you still need to find a pawn here. And the advantage is again because of the double pawns. We have double pawns here for for black as double pawns, and also a weak pawn on a6 as well. Improve the king to the maximum, then you go knight a4 and knight c5. White to play and win. No pawns on the board. It's very rare in the end game that there are no pawns on the board. White has extra bishop. Normally, if it's a normal position, this is theoretically it's a draw. But I've won twice against strong grandmasters. So it's not easy to do in practice. So it's uh, theoretically this is a draw if it's normal position. This not like this. If normal, I mean, if his king is in the middle of the board, his rook is on f5 on line square. Normally, it's a draw, but it's you could win. I won twice, so it's and also many many games have been won by you know two grandmasters playing. So, but this is different position. So you need to calculate and find a way to take advantage of the fact that his rook is on f6 on a dark side and his king is on h8. How can you take advantage of this factor that you know his pieces are on the same diagonal and you have the bishop of that color? Don't think it's simple. It's not that simple actually. You probably see the first move, but very precise follow-up needed. Okay, bishop to b2. Now, if I go check, 
what do you do? You block and you say check now to block. And that gives you a chance to win the piece. Same thing if it goes check, we go back say check. Okay? So if it goes here now, what do we do? Check. <laughs> and now we win the rook. Not check from here. This would be an inaccuracy. Rook f8. He will block it. If he goes here, what do you do? Check. And you win the rook. OK? OK. So now, let's take a look at some defenses. What if he goes here? You have two double checks. Which one is the best? Check. When there are two checks, king must move. If king cannot move anywhere, it's checkmate. So remember, when two checks, immediately then he has to move the king. And now, see rook is guarding the square he can escape from. We go down here, checkmate. OK? And if he goes this way now, what do you do? Check. He comes up now. <laughs> Rook is guarding the square. Checkmate. Same idea, but a little bit different. It depends where he puts the rook. If he puts on g, you go to the c8. If he puts on f8, you go to h3. OK, good. So it looks like simple, yeah? We just go here and we win. Not as simple. Rook h6 now. Best defense. Still losing, but at least it's more difficult now. Let's don't rush, yeah? Don't rush. You have to rook to c6, king h7. He's protecting his rook. Rook to g3. Suggestion. OK. I come up. I go back. I come up. Go back. I go back. Draw would be great for black. Black would be extremely happy to save this game. Imagine if you don't find the right move here, you're not winning this game. Well, I mean, you have the right idea, rook g3, but you have to find the win all the way. Here, now, rook c7, I escape. I go king h8. King h7 now. See? <laughs> well, you have the bishop on the right diagonal. You don't want to. Bishop c1 is just an attack. He, he'll see it. I thought we had covered every other square. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rook move. It's a rook move. It's a rook move. What happens if you take the rook all the way to right? To here? Here? He just comes up and protects his rook. If you take this as a draw, because you cannot checkmate with the bishop. You need a pawn at least. OK, so, huh, so now it's not so easy suddenly, huh? Not so easy now. One thing you have to cut the king so he doesn't escape because if he gets to g8 he's going to escape. OK? 
Okay? So rook g3 idea was correct because you cut the king now. He can't go that way. So he goes here. Now this is good too. Now you have to be careful because there are lots of stalemate ideas. Because he could sacrifice his rook and then he can get a stalemate. What do you do here? Huh? The key move here. You need to find the key move that is winning. He escapes, king g8. G6, you need a quiet, then he comes up, yeah. You need a quiet move. A lot of time in these positions, you need a quiet move. To pass the turn to the opponent. Keep everything the way it is, but you pass the turn. That's accurate. The only one move wins. Yeah, then he goes king g8. He escapes from the corner. He check, now he escapes to f8. He runs away. He runs away, then it's you will play for 50 moves and probably might be a draw. King to b1. Correct. You simply pass the turn now. Let's see what is black going to do. Cannot move the king. So if he goes check, you drop the rook back and you tell him check. And you pick up the pawn. Pick up the rook. Okay? So you cannot do that. Now, the problem for him is anywhere he moves the rook, you're going to move it that direction and say check. Mm -hmm. And you're going to win by doing a discovery check. If he goes rook f6, what do you do? Don't hurry up and just take. See? In blitz, yeah? In like if you have 30 seconds, opponent puts the rook there, you take quickly. Still mate. What? Yeah, rook to g6 or rook to a, uh, any square pretty much. Back, you take. Okay. And now if he goes here, what do you do? Uh, Check. Can go here. It's guarding. If he goes here. Check. All right. Perfect. Now, let's take a look if he goes rook f8. What do you do now? Rook to c7. Check. G7. Check. Perfect. Same exact idea, but now if he checks from here, we're going to go back here and say check. And we pick up the rook. See, without king a2, you cannot win this position. Let's say you make this move, right? Someone suggested this. 
I go check. Check. Still mate. You come up here? No problem. Check. Doesn't matter how you take, still mate. Check. Still mate. So and you go here and just take. Okay, so always have to watch out for that, okay? So lots of nuances. Looks like a simple you put the bishop there and you're gonna win, but no. You have to see lots of nuances here. One, like for example, against each move. The best defense is rook h6, of course, or rook f8. Check, check, and here. Remember, a lot of times in these combinations, you make check, 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 reach a crucial one, and then you play a quiet move. Okay? King, p1. Raise your hand if you know this position. Very famous position. Okay, good. <laughs> it's called Lucina. Anybody familiar with the name Lucina? Rook Endgame? It's one of the most famous positions in Rook Endgame. There's Lucina, there is Philidor. The two most, most famous mm -hmm. positions. I will show you Lucina, and after that I will show you the Philidor. Okay? Philidor is for the defense, Lucina is to win. Okay? Lucina, it's the name, i um, not sure why, probably the person who found this idea, but uh, also known this idea is build the bridge. You basically need to build a bridge in order to win this. This is one of the most important rook endgame positions, endgame position in general, you have to know. So, so okay, how can we win this position? Probably the only way we can win is if we promote this pawn into a queen. Otherwise, you cannot win this. But it's not easy. In fact, if, you, if his king is now in front of the pawn, it's going to be a draw. Okay? So what do you do here in order to be able to promote this pawn into a queen? It takes several steps. Slowly, inch by inch, you improve the position, and after that, you build the bridge. The final step is the building the bridge. Before you do that, you have to put the king on f8, pawn on f7 here. You should be able to reach that position. That's not so difficult. And you have to make sure you keep the king cut. He cannot cross and get in front of the pawn. So you keep that rook there, keep the king cut. So what do we do here? How do we get that position? You could go rook e4, but is it really necessary? King g5. Correct. Now, if he doesn't do anything, we push. So he goes check. f6. He goes back, attack. You push. OK, he's going to keep eye on the pawn. You go to the side again. Push, check, push. OK, now we reach this position. Very important step here is his king is too close to your pawn. That means he can catch your pawn in one move. If your king is away, he can catch it by playing one move. So what you do is you push the king away from the pawn. And the way you do that, when the kings are in front of each other, what do we call that? The position like this, our position, right? That means white king is guarding these three squares. Give a little check. That instantly moves him away from your pawn. Now, he needs two moves to catch your pawn. Okay, he needs two moves. Now, what should be our next step? Not yet. Do we, we don't have the position yet to put that. One more step needs to be done first. Continue. King Correct. Check. King Good. Pawn to f7. OK. Now, 
He has to play rook g1. If he doesn't play rook g1, he's not defending well. For example, if he just goes here, you don't need any breach, anything. You just go here, control the g file. He goes here, you just come up. You queen the pawn. He comes here trying to defend. Check. He goes away. And you queen. Takes, takes, and we check my with the rook. Okay. So he has to play rook g1 because this way, if you don't know the building the bridge method, you're not going to be able to win this game. How do we build the bridge now? Let's see. King e7. Check. Check. G, E, E, G, check. Can you move your rook over to E2 first before you move your king? The problem is if you do that, then his king comes in. See, we, we got the king at the right spot. Uh, this king movement is not going to work because he's going to check you. He's going to give you lots of checks, right? And then you're going to go here, and he's going to go here, and then suddenly he's going to win your pawn. OK? If you don't know how to build the bridge, it will be very pity eh? get this position where you're winning in just two, three moves, but you will lose a half point. You have to know. There are five, six end games you must know. One of them is Lucina. Yes? Better. Building a bridge, we do it on the fourth rank. The reason if you go to d5, I simply attack. OK? Mm. So that's why you don't, we don't do that. You bring the rook to the fourth rank. That's how you build a bridge. Now he goes up. He's keeping the king cut. And now, now we walk with the king. We want a queen. Check. We come up. Check. No rush. Check. We come up. Check. Takes. Queen. You see why I wanted his king to be two squares away from the pawn? Because if it was one square, he would have catched it and win the pawn. OK, do you think you understand how Lucina works? Let's see. Do a little test. I'm going to mix up the position. OK. <laughs> I'll be, then you can do the, yeah. Uh. OK, let's see. White to play and win. By using same method. Same method, you're going to be able to win this game quite easily. Once you know it, it's easy. So f first move. First move, king a5. Check. King b6. We want to give ourselves the square, right? So we can push the pawn. He goes back. d5. Correct. Now he goes here. Be very accurate. Yeah, you cannot lose your pawn. Check with the rook. From where? D2, because we want to move his king away. So we give a check. Now he's away, so now he needs two moves to catch the pawn. This is very important. Now, now next step, c7, check. Now, he has to play rook a3. This is the best defense. But let's say he's not doing that. He goes here. Now you win easily without even building the bridge. No, not yet. Exactly, rook a2. Rook a2, and then king comes up. So he goes here. He doesn't have checks now. 
you can actually even queen first if you like check takes and then after the check he has to step away and we take the rook okay so now he has to play rook a3 and now rook to d4 exactly now he goes here check check okay let's see if you can find a win now I didn't show you this move yet it's a little tricky move now because if I check I already know you're gonna go king b5 and block with rook b4 and you win what do you do now exactly you bring it closer same breach idea bring it closer you come up and to d5 all right and now you're threatening to go rook p5 king here go here okay great so any questions you have about this position about the lucina okay now we're going to do the next position that i mentioned oh by the way this idea works uh, the same way you can win if you have pawn on b c d e f and g okay on these files you use the same idea it works okay if you have a pawn on a and h it's not going to work because it's a uh, very drawish if you have a pawn on a or h file okay now let's take a look at the philidor position this is a pretty bad scenario for black because his king is on the last rung very bad when your king is on the last trunk it's cut that means cannot move forward and white is about to advance his king and push the pawn so it looks like very close white is very close to win but if you know the idea here you're going to be able to make a draw here the defensive resource here philidor name after player philidor himself he found this idea so what do you do here to make a draw if you don't play this move now, you're going to lose. Exactly. The idea is called rook b6. You cut the king. You cannot, you, you always want him to push the pawn first. You don't want his king to get in front of the pawn. Okay? You want the pawn to get ahead first because when the pawn pushed, he's not going to have a place to hide his king. So when you go down, you're going to start checking. You'll see now. Let's say he doesn't do anything, he goes here. What do you do? Same, just move your rook and move your rank. Where? Where? Oh, you keep it on sick rank, right? Yeah. Absolutely, you have to keep him cut. You gotta make sure you keep him cut. Like C6. Yeah. C6. C6 or A6. A6 I like. Further away from the king, better. So, anyway, he's gonna go here. You're gonna go here. After trying a couple of times, he's going to give up and he's going to say, okay, I got to push. What do you do now? One inaccurate move and you can lose. One inaccurate move here. Correct, rook c1. Now, the point is he has no place to hide now. He cannot get in front of the pawn. So now you just start checking from the back. Okay? Usually, in a rook endgame, when opponent has a pass pawn, you want your rook behind the pass pawn. It's very important to know this. You don't want a rook in front of the pass pawn, because if you're in front, you're passive. In the back, you can defend, you can start checking as well. So in a rook endgame, you always want to have, if opponent has a pass pawn, you try to put your rook behind it. Not on the side, not in front, in the behind it. Now, he comes up. He wants to checkmate. He's about to checkmate you, but check. Now you just give him so many checks. Check. Check. 
as soon as he's away from his pawn, that he cannot protect with the king, you attack. If he pushes, we take. If he comes here, we come up. Take, take, take. OK? This is Philidor position. Not very difficult, but you have to know it. You must know Lucina, Philidor, and the other end games also. OK, let's see. So let me change this up a little bit. So let's see if you can hold this endgame against me. I will be trying all the tricks to win it. OK. I will play with white. You play as black. OK? It's a draw, but let's see if you can do it. can play rook c6. Excuse me? Rook c5. So when you have him cut, you can keep the rook there, okay? I will try to do something this way. Very good. You go to h5. You don't make sure you don't get carried away thinking about checks. That's what I want. I want you because a lot of times in in a quick games at least I see a lot of players they try to just Check, check, check. That's what I want. But you don't do that. You keep the king cut. OK, that's, the, w that's what you're trying to do here. No check. Check you could, could bet for you. No choice. I got to push. Correct. Again, no need to check. No need to give any unnecessary checks. You keep them cut. OK? Excuse me? Correct. C6. OK. Well, I'll take the rook. I want to take the rook. Question is now, what do you do now? See, after trying for a while, he's going to try for the last trick. Propose, propose the exchange of the rooks. You don't find the right move, you could very easily lose now. Or make it more difficult, the defensive task here. Take rook? Who knows the king and pawn endgame? Is it a win or a draw? Exactly. This is a draw because the king is in front of the pawn. The opposing king is in front of the pawn. Okay, let's take a look. You take, okay? You come up. Because his king cannot get in front of the pawn. So that means he cannot win. Now you want to come up and win the pawn. So he has to go back. What are you going to do? Get the opposition. This is called opposition. When king's in front of each other, one square, it's opposition. If it's more than one square, it's a distant opposition. This is one, uh, regular opposition. So if he goes back, you just go in front of the pawn. So he has to push. Three moves you have. Two of them losing. One draw. Losing. See? I get you out, and I queen. In front of the king. You make a move, king's in front of each other, it's his move. That means you have the opposition. He pushes. In front of the pawn. He has to go here, still mate. Okay? This is very important to know this king and pawn because many endgames are drawn because you have this resource here. So if I go here, if you don't exchange, then there are some chances you could lose, OK? So you have to make sure you exchange and you know this position. OK, I'm going to try the last try to go for this idea. As soon as he pushes the pawn, where the king has no place to hide, 
What do you do? You go down, all the way down. Because if it checks, you just come up. If it checks, you just go back. So now he has to go here. What do you do? Check. 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 Constantly checking, yeah? Constantly checking. Check. He's away from the pond where he cannot protect it. What do you do? Perfect. Rookie one. Isn't that available on the yeah. yeah, it was. So we go back. Because you don't want to just keep on checking. If you could win a pawn, you want to win a pawn, just fix a draw. He comes up now. What do you do? King e7. King e7. And we take the pawn. Okay? So very important. Two most popular rook end games we'll study today. Felidor. This one and the Lucina. Okay, very important to know this endgame positions. <laughs>